Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about some things that are maybe making your Astro photos not near as good as they could be. Uh, some mistakes you might be making. Beginners will tend to make these mistakes more, but I still see some more advanced Astro photographers making me these mistakes too. So let's talk about them. First thing I want to go over is clipping your blacks. So clipping your blacks is when the background of your image or the you know blacks of your image are way too dark and you can see this when your histogram is way too far to the left that the spike starts to get clipped out and that means you are clipping your blacks and that you're losing any dim detail at all which you certainly don't want and if you're getting this in processing you need to make sure you're not over processing your images to the point of bringing your blacks all the way down and your lights all the way up and just kind of over stretching it not only does this cause noise issues with the image but uh you definitely don't want to clip your blacks because if you do that during processing any dim detail you picked up over your imaging session will definitely be lost the second thing i want to talk about is dithering whether that's manually or automatic with your guiding uh, dithering is crucial for pretty much any astro image at all or you will get that nasty walking noise in your image uh, which is pretty much over the time of stacking your image and your pattern noise really just starts to keep pretty much walking hence the name walking noise so to prevent this you want to mix up your pattern noise a bit so you want to dither. What dithering is, is moving your FOV by a few pixels at a time, uh, usually 15 to 20. So your pattern noise doesn't always just stack on top of each other and cause walking noise. So you do this with guiding. You can set a dither for, I normally do every three subs and I dither by 15 to 20 pixels. Uh, if you don't have guiding, you can manual dither. So you can just manually move your FOV by 15 to 20 pixels or however much every few subs to try to get some dithers in there and mix up that noise a little bit so it's something that I think you should really consider doing or consider upgrading the guiding and things like that because it's really worth it and will make your images so much more better if you don't have walking noise because no matter what noise reduction method you use it will not remove walking noise Another thing is something that is more so common in beginners, I knew I did this when I was a beginner, that was target hopping and not spending enough time on just one single target. I would shoot Orion for an hour, two hours, and then I would switch the horse head for an hour, two hours, and that's just not a good idea. I know it's really tempting when it's the first clear night in ages and you just, you just have so much stuff you want to shoot, but I telling you it is just better to stick with one target for the entire night or a couple nights at a time to pull a nice integration on it because you will always be happier at least for myself anyway I will always be happier with a really nice long integration time and just a, an amazing image on one target than a like for instance three decent images on three different targets so something you can really consider doing is just not target hopping, sticking to one target. Uh, I know this can be preference for some of you guys that might not want to necessarily do astrophotography for super long integrations. You just want to see things and image them and you know that's fine. But if you're really focusing on getting the best images possible, you need to spend lots of integration on every single target you shoot. Pretty much no matter how bright it is because it's always worth getting that extra SNR. The next one, and I know we're all guilty of this, is simply just overstretching and overdoing the data, just completely cooking the process. And I know we're, we are all guilty of this somewhere down the road, uh, of just not wanting to accept we simply don't have enough data to get something out, or maybe we didn't get as much color on something as we like, and we just overprocess it to try to get it, which causes multiple issues. Number one, if you are completely overstretching, you could be bringing out a lot of noise and any issues with the images, which of course you don't want. Another example of overprocessing is something I'm definitely guilty of. That's not having enough color on something and just kind of masking it and trying to add that color without literally faking it. 
Uh, that's something I'm guilty of in the past, but I definitely try to stay modest about it, and I do not really do that anymore, because of course I want every image, just like every action photographer, to be as pretty much real as possible. Another one that involves processing it has to be over denoising, which I see so much of just people taking the noise slider all the way up, or noise exterminator, turning it to 100%, and just completely over denoising the image, which really starts to lose detail and any sharpness within the image that exists if you just over denoise it. I see so many people doing it too. I know it can be tempting to over denoise things, especially when you're shooting dark nebulae or maybe something you didn't get a much integration on, so you over denoise it. But trust me, not having enough integration time looks better than not having enough integration time and just completely over denoising the image. So you 